hey, y'all, I'm back like I never left. Then, you know, uh, I'm coming at you with a review from for, uh, for the recent Mulan movie that came out this year. Um, I know what many of y'all may be thinking, like, uh, you know, hey, I thought you said you was going to review uh, Dragon Prince Season 3 and uh, Ruby Volume 7 and all that in uh, uh, 1917. I'm like, yeah, I know, I promised, and oh, God, I will get to it as soon as I can when there's, you know, some free time for me. Uh, and I promise, you know, I will, you know, do my all the uh, pretty much make those, you know, videos that uh, promise promising videos. But, you know, considering, you know, Mulan is kind of, you know, a current film out right now. And literally, I just saw it. I just felt like, you know, well, why the hell not? And uh, so, yeah, is that uh, I promise I'll get to 1917. I promise I'll get to Dragon Prince Season 3, and I promise I'll get to Ruby Volume 7. Uh, y'all can <laughs> y'all can correct me in the uh, in the comment section below. I I know it's kind of it's kind of been a long time since I tuned in with Ruby, so yeah, it's kind of sketchy. It's Forever uh, Volume 7 or Volume 8, but pretty much that's the one where uh, they go to Atlas and they finally get their Huntress uh, license, so yeah, it's Forever which one of them. Y'all can correct me or whatnot, but I'll make sure to get to that too. Um, uh, pretty much literally over the summer, I had a lot of time to actually finally sit back and, you know, absorb some media and whatnot, so I can finally get, you know, towards, you know, doing something or having something to review later on for the uh, ensuing future, so that was that, and considering how this movie, Mulan, kind of has people running around like, like, uh, chickens with their heads cut off, I thought it would be kind of... Uh, uh, it'll be it'll be kind of necessary to review something current and right now, uh, so that's that. Um, so for uh, for starters, uh, when going into this movie in particular, uh, I kind of I wouldn't say I have low expectations. No, not that. I just kind of knew what I was going to be in for when I saw it. Like. Yeah, obviously another Disney live action uh, cash grab, and you know why the hell are we looking at these? They always turn out like shit, or just painfully mediocre, or really pale uh, 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 imitation of its uh, of its uh, counterpart. But I'm like, uh, why not? It's on. Yeah, yeah, I'm able to see it for free, you know, because I'm not dropping thirty just to, uh, thirty dollars just to see a one hour movie that's adequate anyway. So yeah, I saw it for free, and I was like, why the hell not? So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, and when I meant like when I went to this movie with you know pretty much just uh, yeah, I wouldn't say low expectations, but with you know average, yeah, I guess I would say that or. You know, probably not even expecting high ones at all. Like that, uh, what I mean when I say by that, like, it's simply because literally how this movie literally been in development hell, and quite frankly, when I saw the trailers, I was kind of mild, mildly uh, impressed. Not completely, just mildly. Like, oh look, Disney's doing a live action movie. Eh. Uh, so pretty much to get things out of the way right quick this movie at times yeah it's somewhat accurate to its original predecessor with some major overhauls in it like some really glaring major ones and quite frankly if it wasn't for you know the silk dress sort of fact of the theme alone that a woman is uh, fighting a man's war you pretty much wouldn't recognize this being a Mulan movie in the first place. Wherever that's intentional so that, you know, this movie could branch out and have its own identity. Like, if that was the director's choice, then, you know, they pretty much did the job right. Uh, but for people who pretty much grew up on the original one, uh, well, yeah, you, that's pretty much about it. You pretty much wouldn't be able to recognize this movie if it wasn't for the essential theme of it alone, as well as, you know the character being Mulan itself and the concept and probably basic gist of the story. Um, pretty much one of the really, a really controversial part of this film is mostly that uh, Mushu, who's played by Eddie Murphy in the last movie, is gone. 
And apparently, you know, Disney was, you know, selling this to China because, you know, that's where the money is. If it ain't about the money. So, yeah. And uh, most of the Chinese audience, the demographic, didn't like the fact that pretty much... Uh, pretty much a big symbol in their culture, the dragon, was kind of being tarnished uh, by how they probably displayed it. But we all know that, you know, simply China just didn't want that because a black guy was essentially the, you know, the, the, uh, and what would be Mushu's role? He, the, was essentially the, um, the fire starter. Uh, no pun intended, the fire starter for the main character in the story. And they didn't like the fact that a black guy is pretty much in a lead role, essentially, like the side character to it. So, yeah, that, that or at least, you know, that's, that's the speculations by many. Uh, go hit up Mannix. He literally kind of said it best. He, he said it better than me. So, yeah, there's that. Um, so, yeah, there's that. As well as uh, also the the main actress herself, Lu Yifei, uh, pretty much kind of said, uh, uh, kind of pretty much uh, praised the uh, Hong Kong police. And if you ever seen the news recently, uh, the world ain't really loving the police right now. So yeah, that kind of also caused a lot of uh, controversy and whatnot. Although personally, that's just how she feels going on, but. In the same time, yeah, the world ain't loving police, and I've been hearing some things going on in Hong Kong with their police system being pretty much almost as corrupt as ours, apparently, from, you know, anything. But, you know, that's what it is. I try to stay really apolitical on this channel, because politics in general tends to actually divide people, and that's literally the last thing I want for this channel when I'm reviewing it. Oh, man, this shit is so fucking snug, man. <laughs> it's a triple lodge, but yeah, it still works. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, for the most part, that's all that, the whole main controversy people have with it. And, of course, you know, uh, fanboys or, you know, original watchers not liking this because it's a pale imitation. And, at some t and, and some even claim it's kind of a feminist, you know, propaganda fest. Which I'll probably get into later while I'm actually, you know, dissect and, you know, do a skeptical uh, analysis of the film for the most part. So, uh, pretty much this first, like, half, I'm just more or less dis uh, discussing, you know, the controversies and, you know, a few details about, you know, what this movie's been getting recently. Like, the reception for it, it's like mixed nowadays. It's, it's almost like Lily up there. With uh, uh, the Last Jedi, Star Wars, Last Jedi, like it's so polarizing. It literally has two people on opposite sides. Some people liked it, some people despised it, and, and you know, I, me personally, I was kind of like in the between with it when I saw it. Um, so pretty much, this movie kind of picks off uh, somewhat similar to the original source material, uh, and you know, there's a bit more you know context going on, like. It starts literally from square one where she's a, a little girl and, you know, she has latent abilities and whatnot, uh, which I also get into later, which is kind of uh, personally, I wouldn't say a glaring problem, but one thing if the film didn't have, uh, you know, no one would lose any sleep over it if it did or if it didn't. Uh, personally, it, I think if, you know, that one, this, this one glaring detail was cut out, then you know, it wouldn't affect it anyhow, but I guess, you know, it would have saved better. Eh, fuck it, man, it's key, it's the key concept. I, I keep fucking teasing y'all with it, but I'm like, yeah, it's the key concept of the story. That, that That's essentially what I'm trying to get, you know, across, but yeah, there's that. Uh, I'll get to it later, though. So yeah, pretty much the movie opens up with, you know, kind of like the movie, and aside from, you know, her childhood flashback moment, it pretty much picks up for her, you know, being a maiden and uh, doing her little tea ceremony with the uh, mistress lady or whatever. And, you know, she literally, there's a scene literally reminiscent to Spider-Man where, you know, when uh, Mary Jane slipped up 
and she had the plate of food and Peter caught it all. Yeah, that's literally what happened during the tea ceremony and, you know, showing great balance. Like, you know, she could be a good dancer or or something young, uh, uh, one day the main mistress or mentor or whatever pretty much escorts her out. Like, there was that. I guess, you know, they wanted to show how, you know, Mulan, that, that scene in particular was specifically made to draw out more of uh, Mulan's, uh, you know, uh, 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 latent abilities, her skill, her latent skill that she don't know about that we event that eventually will transpire into the rest of the film. So, yeah, yeah, she gets kicked out. She feels like she disgraced her family. And, you know, the Emperor is about to go into war with, no, not the Huns, just like in the last one, but with with uh, a similar Hun-like clan that's, yeah, you can actually find this in the textbook. I kind of, you know, did a little history look-see before, you know, I got to this video called The Rorons. The Rorons. Not the Huns, the Rorons. And uh, <laughs> I, I just found it funny because literally when I was taking this movie, I just literally was, like, writing notes about all of it. And I was mostly thinking to myself, like, uh, how uh, it kind of get when they say Rorons instead of Huns. Yeah, granted, you know, the Rorons, you know, were kind of in, in history. Yeah, actually history. They tried to, you know, conquer parts of China just like the Huns did and the Mongols and whatnot. I just find it funny how Disney, of course, sold this to their to their Chinese audience. And if we know anything about a recent uh, uh, a past controversy, my, uh, my bad. A past controversy is when uh, uh, Ghost of Tsukishima was trying to be uh, was going to be uh, released in China. Uh, China refused it. Well, I, I'm kind of getting the story catch, sketchy, but pretty much China refused it because you know the Mongols weren't in it. And so Ghost of Tsukishima, there's uh, some Mongol characters, you know, in the story. Uh, more specifically, Japan, as it seems, and China pretty much didn't like that. Uh, China apparently has a hate boner for uh, world history. I uh, think mostly because they got their asses whooped by the Mongols in history. I mean, it, it could be a little thing. So I knew that uh, Disney, they simply had to use something similar to it while uh, having to be uh, on the nose with it with Huns. So they try to ease right through it despite literally <coughs> quoting them, uh, uh, literally <coughs> using a similar clan, a similar event in that country's history to, pri to, 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 uh, to prioritize it while having to really, you know, say Huns or the mention of Mongols because, you know, China is kind of iffy about, you know, world history, uh, about their own history at this point, knowing from Ghost of Tsukishima. And pretty much they uh, couldn't mention Huns in this film because they were selling it off to China because that's where the money is. And, you know, they had to, you know, rub them out as soon as any, uh, as any chance. So, yeah, there's that. So, you know, they pretty much uh, got a uh, jail out of free card and used Rorons instead of saying Huns because they knew, you know, China had some issues with, you know, the history and all that. So there's that. I mean, it's literally tomato, tomato, but, you know. If your cup's full, my cup's full. So, you know, everyone's happy, I guess. But, yeah, there's that out of the way. So, yeah, the Rorons in this movie are literally a replacement of the Huns in the last one. And the Rorons, just like, in the, just like the Huns from the last Mulan movie, want to conquer China, but more specifically the Imperial City where the Emperor was. And now there's a new take to the story. The Emperor more or less killed Sean Yu, Sean Yu's father. So aside from, you know, Sean Yu wanted to simply just conquer the city and pretty much most of the country, it's also kind of a revenge boner at this point with this, with this character. And here's where it kind of gets sketchy with the most antagonists that the antagonist concept of this film. Okay, from what we're shown, Ro Rodon, the Roron leader, Sean Yu, or 
I, yeah, whatever name they have for him in this. But, no, that's Sean Yu. It's just a rose by any other name. Uh, so, yeah, Sean Yu, you know, is brought up to being the main villain of this. But until you realize that he's overshadowed by another uh, antagonist in the series who's uh, known as, who's roughly, who's, uh, roughly known as the witch by... His, by by literally Sean Usman call her the witch. Some of uh, the Chinese soldiers refer to her as witch, and even Sean Sean Yu himself refers to her as witch. So yeah, that's what it is. Although despite it's just uh, Gung Li uh, in this film. So yeah, Gung Li anyway, uh, pretty much serves as the witch, and really she herself literally overshadows the essential main villain this movie brought up in this movie uh Sean Yu and uh, although I kind of liked it I kind of personally liked Gong Gong Lee's character in this movie and pretty much you know honestly I kind of thought she was literally one of the only things in this film that kind of kept me there cuz you know Gong, uh, uh, Gong Lee is bae so yeah <laughs> I, I love me some Gong Lee, and <laughs> personally, I kind of felt like she was like really one of the most best and actually somewhat developed characters in this story. For everyone else, uh, not so much. Everyone was pretty static, in my opinion, in this. And uh, I really do hate to compare this to the last movie because, again, like I said, th th this uh, uh, this movie and the one from back in the day are, yeah. One is uh, simply based on the other. One's a live a remake of the other, but in the same time, I also have to respect, or un you can also kind of get to the conclusion that these two things, these two films, are their own continuity. They're 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 their own, you know, source material. Yeah, one is based on the other. But granted, one is simply supposed to be seen as something else it can it can stand up on. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, Gung Lee uh, personally was actually uh, aside from pretty much the main actress herself, Lu Lu Yifei. Although uh, due to the popular demands, I was honestly kind of uh, expecting Constance Wu or uh, or Zhang Ziyi, well, but more specifically uh, Constance Wu to uh, play the role as Mulan because she was kind of really you know big you know a couple of years back, especially with. Uh, Crazy Rich Asians or Rich Crazy Asians or whatever, you know, that really Asian-filled movie from, like, two years ago. But, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, honestly, I was expecting Constance Wu to be in this movie. But Liu Yifei, uh, despite of, you know, all the controversy she's been, she's been going through and how sometimes even her acting can get static at moments, despite of all of that, she and... And Gung Lee and uh, uh, Jet Li as the Emperor, I feel like those, the three of those characters, the three of those actors, really seem like they were really giving it their all in this uh, movie for the most part. Um, it, it's a toss between Gung Lee and, uh, and and Yu Fei for me, but I got Gung Lee actually pretty much being one of the best performance. So yeah, there's that. So it goes the way as the movie goes. Uh, the emperor comes to local Chinese villages to recruit men for the war. Uh, Mulan has a vagina, so she can't go. Which in this movie, I don't. They probably is feminist agenda going on, feminist propaganda, what whatever <coughs> going on in this film. But uh, compared to his predecessor, this movie kind of really does go out of its way just to mention that you know she has a vagina. In this like that she's not a boy that she's a girl and it kind of does it way more than his predecessor at times there's kind of does seem beaten over the head so yeah i can see how people can't come up with uh the cost uh, uh, that does come up with uh a theory that well not theory god oh where's my words today people uh, <laughs> but no seriously uh, i can see how people will come to the conclusion that this is feminist propaganda because of how sometimes it's hammered in that uh, what gender she belongs to. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, 
So, yeah, they pick him up and all that. And, you know, they go to the camp. She's a fuck up. It pretty much goes as the movie. But, you know, there's no uh, Be a Man. That Be a Man song is cut out. So, there's that. Uh, which is one thing I really got to talk about the score, too. Is uh, a lot of people literally got their panties in a bunch. That, uh, you know, they cut out all the vocal songs in this. Which I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, it, it's funny how how uh, the split mentality people have for this film. They don't like it because it's not like it's it's uh, original source material. Which in some aspects, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I can see where you're going from. But, I'm like, again, this is its own thing. Like, yeah, it's based on animated Mulan, but this movie essentially, from how it's brought up, from what it's trying to do, is trying to be represented as its own entity. So, they cut out the film, so they cut out the song to more or less put more yeah, inferences yeah, inf- uh, inf- inferences on, um, you know, the more nar- the narrative heaviness in this story. Uh, so, there's that, but Here's my main problem with the score. I mean, when they cut out the vocals, they did this one thing, right? Okay, they cut out the vocals in this song, right? But you know the beat to the vocals, right? The beat, right? Yeah, guess what? It's all in this song, but it's harmonized. It's like got this really soft French horn, you know, wong, wong, wong. You know how in most of these trailers nowadays, like French horn and all that. Yeah, it's it's essentially literally the original uh, song, the original score. Well, some some of the songs anyway. Everything else is just stock footage music that's just forgettable. And, you know, it's all heroic Ding, 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 ding. You know, it's like, you know, Chinese orchestra to it, of course. But, yeah, everything else is just stock music. But, essentially, this the, the music director, the sound director... What may have you of this film essentially took the vocal songs from the older movie and simply took the instrumental to it and vocalized and not vocalized. God, no, no. They took the instrumental aspects of these songs and they literally rose it up, softened it a bit. You know, to make it sound more grandiose, like "Ooh, it's a big adventure," which I wouldn't have any problem with because you know it's. Like you know, it's 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 ear candy for you know people who saw the original movie. Like so, you wouldn't forget. But the thing is, I feel like knowing Disney, like how what uh, how big they purse is, and the fact that you know they could have actually done their all to actually you know have a better soundtrack than this. I just felt like the soundtrack they really just fell off of this one. Like. Like, you know, knowing the theme and, and the dire situation of this, like, there's so much emotion you could have put into the score of this film, but most of it is just ones from the last, it's just ones from the last one, just with the instrumental instrumental uh, being, you know, raised up a bit and softened and French horned and just everything else just being stock, heroic, Avenger-esque music. Ooh. <laughs> So yeah, there's that. The score is just it, it's it's forgettable, and when you hear it, it's like yeah, it's cool and all, but for the most part, it's just there. It's forgettable, and, and it's simply it's just ear candy for anyone who saw the the previous movie. And on that part, it's just lazy. I'm like, especially Disney, like again, has the has bag. They can they literally could have actually done something with it. Um. Yeah, another thing, another a glaring issue I kind of have with it, aside from most things, yeah, I'm I pretty much am done pretty much summarizing the movie because, like, like do you, you know how many huge, like, countless YouTubers literally do the same thing for the reviews? They summarize the whole plot. And I kind of tend to, you have to get out of that and actually, you know, speak, speak on it a more objective reason. Like, yeah, we know what fucking happened. We can go see the movie or hear someone else ramble about it or go to Wikipedia and just read the plot to it. Like, it's not that hard. So, yeah, there's no point in me summarizing it. I mean, by now you should already know that I was getting spoilers. But, yeah, that was the whole thing. Uh, uh, so, yeah, pretty much... 
oh, another uh, pretty much another glaring issue I have with this is, you know, the same problem with Aladdin, like how Aladdin looked or how uh, that god awful Last Airbender movie uh, made by M Night Shyamalan, how the set design and even the clothing design seemed so artificial and. They try to make it look, you know, they try to make it look rustic, but it all looks like, you know, most of the clothing looks like something you can literally just go to a Hot Topic and buy. And this movie is literally kind of no, is literally no stranger to that. Like, literally most of the suits, yeah, granted, you know, are pretty accurate for, you know, the time they came, you know, in that time, Imperial China. And uh, granted, yeah, some of them actually are, you know, pretty good for the most part. I just can't shake the feeling is that it all looks like it, all the clothing of this movie really looks like it just came out of an assembly line and it just slipped it on like this. Like, like I, I can't help it. Like, they try to make it, you know, all gritty and whatnot, but all the clothes literally looks like uh, 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 Jessica Negri's wardrobe. Um, and pretty uh, that, that's another glaring issue, too. So, you know, paired with uh, clothing uh, design in this movie. It's uh, also the makeup work in this. Like, you know, despite, you know, them being in war and, and, and Lou Yife, uh more specifically, like when an action scene is over or really, you know, a tense scene is over, most of her clothing and her faces literally look spotless. Like... <laughs> Like, you know, nothing ever happened. And then other times it looks really grungy and they're really muddy or they're really, or, you know, they're sweating and it looks like, you know, they're tense. And when I kind of saw it, it kind of reminded me of uh, the fight, the, the, the fighting scene from uh, 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 Revenge, Revenge of the Sith, Episode 3, Star Wars, where there was on Mustafar, the lava planet, and they were fighting. And literally, if you compared Ewan McGregor, <laughs> to uh, to Hayden Christensen, like uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi, literally, despite you know winning and you know being on a planet of lava and fighting, you know you expect them to sweat in it, you know, because that's what would happen, or his hair to be undone. But no, literally in every scene, you know his hair is always well greased or in a right position and everything. And, and Mulan's literally that, and and then some and and. It's literally the same thing. Uh, his hair was still in place and all that, and he still looked it clean and whatnot. And that's what Mulan was, and it's kind of inconsistent. Sometimes he, it looks gritty, sometimes it looks really bright. Like, this movie is actually, like, almost kind of blinding sometimes. It's like the that god-awful Latin remake everyone was trying to defend so much. Like, no, this movie is terrible. And <laughs> one of the main reasons both movies, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but <laughs> the main reason why is because it's just so bright and like it, it's it kind of almost like it's kind of almost hard to look at you know with with a straight face sometimes because it almost looks like your eyes about to melt out your skull sometimes. <laughs> and that, that's pretty much I have on the ma on makeup concept or you know in terms of detail like it's kind of so wonky and inconsistent at times uh in terms of set designs i'm pretty mixed about it because i literally had to see this movie twice when i made this of course the first time around when i saw it i'm like oh god this shit looks like the back of a porn parody shoot and like like axel braun or something and like like that's what it looked like and i'm like oh, i'm not i'm not digging it and you know the second time when i actually looked at it you know the establishing shots and whatnot. Most of them, you know, rustic Chinese uh, uh, Eastern, you know, design. And other scenes, it's literally just it's literally just some canyon or or some grass field. Like like that's literally if it's not you know the the the, the set design. Some of them being traditional rustic Chinese uh, architecture uh, architecture. If it's not that, then it's an obvious set design where it literally looks like it was built from the ground up. 
and in a really cheaply way possible because this movie, uh, despite what the budget may say, actually looks like uh, it had to take two dollars to make. Um, and yeah, if it's not that, if it's not you know convincing enough rustic buildings or obvious uh, uh, set designs, uh, then it's uh, it's some it's a grass field. It's some standard boring grass field or it's canyons and literally most of the movies uh most of this movie's uh set design most most of uh where it kind of takes place from what i've seen where aware mulan's character in particularly was going through most of it was just some canyon somewhere it's just canyons 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 a few fake rocks here like she was sleeping on a fake rock and all that and it kind of becomes really obvious sometimes. And again, it really speaks real high volumes about, you know, the measures Disney really went to make this. They, they simply made it to pander. They didn't really care about actually, you know, making this a thing. Because if, if we're going to talk about how mediocre the, the set designs or how wonky, you know, the quality, if it gets at least. And we got to talk about, you know, the CGI and about it too. Like... And going back to, you know, Disney literally made this movie as cheaply as possible. The, the CGI all looks so, it looks so aged. It, it, it looks like, uh, the, the CGI of this looks like uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Like, that's what it literally looks like. It's so aged. And it's kind of obvious. And I'm like, Disney, you too rich for this. I get it. You make these movies out of fucking pocket change. But... Seriously, the CGL on this is just so obvious. Like you could have literally fixed this, or or you know, actually put resources towards it. But it's just so blatantly terrible. It looks like Kung Fu Hustle. No offense to Kung Fu Hustle, but this is a 2020 movie, a modern 2020 movie. That movie, Kung Fu Hustle, was was literally made like 20 years ago. Uh, that, that makes sense, okay, CJ was kind of like, you know, yeah, here and there, like it was kind of getting off the ground, and we, and we got things like Tsukishima, how that looks, and I'm looking at Mulan CJ, I'm like, this shit looks like Kung Fu Hustle, I mean, this whole movie is like a really low budget Hong Kong feel at, film at times, from the way it's shot, and from uh, some of the things that's improvised. I mean, in this movie's credit, at least the whole cast is actually, you know, uh, race appropriate, I guess. So, you know, China wouldn't have anything to bitch about, unlikely from <clears throat> another country. From unlikely from another country I know of. Um, so there's that. But yeah, the CGI is like god awful, especially with uh, Gung Lee's character when she turns into bats. Like you can obviously tell that. You know, Lu Yifei is is also told by the director to just look at the sky and pretend something's above you. Like like that's how kind of just like you know obvious it is at some points. And Disney, God sakes, man, <laughs> you guys literally have Pixar and their graphics for those movies are 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 are, uh, are spectacular. Yeah, there we go. For lack of a better word, spectacular. And you can literally put that same resources in uh, <coughs> chalking up some better CGI for this. <coughs> so, yeah, there's that. Uh, in terms of actually in action and, and cinematography, this movie, it can be really great. Although, just like if you ever see my, my uh, Bleach review, you can obviously tell sometimes there's obvious wire work. And and you can obviously yeah it's obviously wire work in this and this movie itself is no stranger to it, um, and the the wire work sometimes oh let me just establish the action scenes in this movie are well choreographed some of them are actually are martial arts practitioners from what I've heard, but for the overall the choreographers of this you know they really did put their foot in this movie actually kind of at times does feel like. I'm looking at a genuine uh, 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 kung fu film, but that with that being said, the wire work sometimes get obvious. Like, yeah, you can obviously tell that guy literally crawled up a wall 
did a flip backwards to just shoot his arrow and then land back and land back on his feet. Like, yeah, you can also tell he was, it was lift up. <laughs> and if you kind of look closely, you can actually see the crane he was being lift up on. But no, seriously, the wire work, it's... I, I like the fact they actually use, they actually improvise instead of use some schlock, ugly-ass CGI bullshit in this. And they actually, you know, you know, actually wanted to physically improvise by using wire work to make it look convincing. But whoever's doing the wire work in this, they kind of, you know, need to redo it again or something. Or actually need to look at, you know, the, the, the fruits that are bearings because bearing of the fruits or whatever. Because sometimes it can be really fucking obvious sometimes. And it just look like the actors at points are just dangling. Like, oh, oh, put me down, put me down, put me down, put me down. That's what it kind of looks like sometimes. There's that, though. But in terms of action choreography, this movie is great. Wire work, you know, it, it could really use some work in it. And it can be blatantly clear sometimes. And for God's sakes, can this, this movie kind of has some uh, a jump cut fetish because literally every time a character swings a sword when you know they put a particular fight in the full focus every time said character swings a sword or shoots a boat or or you know shoots an arrow or what may have you know fighting it always seems to cut back and forth to each character with jump cuts and it just kind of it kind of at times just get difficult to you know follow up or, you know, make out or interpretate what's going on. So, yeah, there's that. Like, can you just literally just shoot a, a full frame, long shot at, uh, uh, fight scene without having to resort to constant jump cuts in this film? You can't, sometimes, like I say, you can't tell who's fighting who sometimes. You kind of get lost in the sauce of what's going on, which is one other problem with this film. Uh, Granted, yeah, the the cam the the the, mm, the camera work in this is fine, but it it, it just feels like sometimes they just pan the shots anytime. Cause despite you know this movie kind of actually having somewhat of an enriched plot, it tends to jump to A and B real quick. Especially if you were to compare it to its uh, predecessor, this movie tends to jump to A to B real quick, like. They literally told you uh, uh, Mulan's flashback and her modern life and her dilemma and her, you know, duty to restore, on, you know, to keep honor in her family. It's literally told under three minutes. Well, well, I'm kind of, you know, juicing it. But, yeah, like, give or take six or ten minutes, and it's literally just all thrown to you. And pretty much for a good half, this is what this movie is. It's just shit just thrown at you. It's really A to B real quick. And it especially doesn't help with these really amateurish uh, 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 camera angles they, they shoot. Like, every time they show the devilly Warons, it's literally an established shot. Well, not a established shot. A long shot, yeah. Or medium shot sometimes. It depends on which scene. A medium shot or a long shot of literally them riding all their black steeds in the desert. And sometimes there's like two scenes of it in particular that almost literally looked identical. But yeah, there's that. Uh, well, actually, going back to the narrative of this, one thing I, one thing that pretty much bugged a lot of people off about this film, about about this was um, the fact that they implemented key into this storyline. Uh, mostly people, the original ones, you know, said it never was there. And, you know, it seems improbable. But so it's a really bad CGI Vatu from Legend of Korra, uh, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, Mushu's replaced by a woman, uh, uh, Phoenix, just so you know. Because I guess, okay, China doesn't like when people misrepresent their dragon. Yet, literally Phoenix... Mostly found in Western culture, they literally take. But you don't, you're, you're, you'll literally shit a brick if a black guy portrays an icon in your culture or unless, which itself is an easy fix. You could like 
get an Asian voice actor. So there's there's that. But you know, it's kind of racist, obviously. But and if it's not that, then you know, it's discarding our tradition of how Mushu acts and is and whatnot. But we all know it's because a, a nigga's behind it. But let's just be honest. But yeah, okay. But that aside, you're scared of representation of a iconic creature of your culture, yet you take another. The pot can't be the pot can't be any blacker, people. But yeah, there's that. Uh, yeah, going more back to you know narrative and humor and characters in this. Pretty much everyone's pretty much undeveloped in this in this movie, aside from of course. Mulan herself and Gung Lee. Uh, a cricket is the typical bumbling idiot companion who ends up turning to turning out to be an unlikely hero. And I don't know if that's uh, Russell from Deadpool 2, but he does look a lot like him. His name is Cricket, by the way. Anyone else? Uh, there's the general. There, there's the general, and then there's the I guess second in command Cole Captain who's supposed to, who's uh apparent repla who's a obvious uh replacement for uh Mulan's uh uh crush in the last film and he literally serves the same purpose but you know I guess this old feminist thing you know a woman can stand up on her own so I guess they cut him out from this one to essentially just replace some with the same character and the fact that you obviously kind of have a romantic interest for each other. Oof. And I know people usually clown the less Mulan for, you know, obviously having some LGBTQ and, uh, you know, homoerotic t uh, tendencies. But in this one, it's kind of a bit on the nose and it happens to mostly be all the guys. It literally to the point that one of the characters' names is literally called Yao. I'll just let y'all search that up. Uh, obviously, this is a, a adult channel, so yeah, I'm not. You know, this this was never for kids. If you obviously know the jargon I use, and you know, even some of the topics I cover in this, you know, it's obviously not for kids. But yeah, I'll let you guys, you know, look that up on your own accord, of course. But. Yeah, it's some it's kind of some scenes in it's kind of blatantly obvious, which also really strikes a lot of values about uh, of uh, uh, values of uh, the whole SJW representation and pandering with this film. Uh, not even in the last movie they were on the nose about it. It was subtle. That's kind of how most you know really well written stories are formed through being subtle and. This one uh, pretty much kind of doesn't know what it is, and it, it sometimes it does mention a lot the fact that Mulan is, you know, a woman. So there's that. Uh, on narrative, pretty much, I mean, it's fine, but it really doesn't do it for me, I guess, because I've seen the, the plot of this like hundred times before I guess and literally towards the end it kind of literally doesn't put any effort of being any different from his predecessor kind of literally just like how Lion King is literally a shot by shot remake hell leaving James Earl Jones reprised his role in it so yeah there's that and the movie's ending for this movie is literally I wouldn't say a shot by shot of course but literally narrative wise and concept wise it's literally the same thing you know she mm, there's one scene where they're fighting the Rorons and Mulan takes four helmets with her or, although I mean well it was two but from the ending from the ending scene of it it was like you know various but from what we shown it was two she puts them on a like, you know, pillars of rocks to distract the Mongols to deter them towards the helmets. Despite literally it being a, a line of Mongols and the Chinese soldiers 
and she was on the battlefield, a blatant battlefield where everyone could see her, where the Mongols were catapulting from. She was, this is the Mongol line, this is her. She literally ran on the battlefield with the helmets that go around them to set up the helmets to distract them. I'm like, they wouldn't blatantly see a woman uh, breach, uh, uh, in, uh, breaching them from behind or like like how the, how the shot was. And it literally happened in a flash. Like, literally she picked up the helmets and boom, she was uh, behind them or at least like, you know, on their you know, on the right, as horizontal, uh, the camera is sitting really, you know, reversed. So, yeah, it's just one of those really weird shots. It was in the middle of the battlefield where they were, you know, taking a more project, a more uh, defensive style. While the uh, Chinese soldiers were more offensive. But her, let alone on the stallion, was got some dead soldier helmets. Because, you know, the whole... You know, honor thy warrior thing, I guess, doesn't apply to Mulan in this. And she set it up on a on a stone wall, some a stone wall, to deter the soldiers to them, so that she can she was able to direct the catapult, just like in the original movie, the catapult to a to a frozen mountaintop. The greater avalanche to, to more or less crush most of the uh, Roron uh, soldiers. While reckless at the same time, she kind of, you know, hurt her own men at the process. I mean, it, and, and it's funny because that scene in particular is actually one of the actually best parts in the film. As well as a lot of, of a really heartwarming. Admittedly, a lot of, there are a lot of her heartwarming and actually in really enjoyable parts of the film. But that in particular, like, not simply because it was like the original one, because, again, already established, this is his own continuity. It really does show Mulan's uh, a, a crafty mind, her, her technical mind about it. Because pretty much from any other concept, Everything else, the reason why she's kind of good at things, or she kind of has an edge over most of the characters, because literally Mulan outclasses everyone in this film, that they pretty much established that, is simply because of her, of her attachment to Ki, which is something they established that only male warriors had, but apparently she's, you know, strong with it. Kind of like Ray from Star Wars, where you can obviously tell the parallels. Yeah. And like, it seems like that to really show her inner ingenuity instead of, yeah, other times pretty much throughout the film. The reason why she's such a, a, a mamma jamma is because she has key. Like that scene alone, it, it disproves it. And it's one of the scenes where it actually does look like, you know, the character is using her head instead of having to get a. Uh, 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 jail out of free car with Key being there, and actually uh, talking about Key, that's pretty much the that's pretty much what Gong Li's character pretty much represents. She represents a more darker a, a, a darker side to Mulan. If you know, she got so fed up with uh, with you know uh, the common motive, and you know became rogue and. Kind of villainous. That's literally what Gong Li's character in is. This is. She was a a, a a girl just like Mulan, who had to live up the expectations, and pretty much anyone spat in her hand, and she was like, "Fuck all y'all," and she went rogue, and she suddenly swore to more or less get revenge on China for more or less turning her to an outcast, and pretty much, yeah, that that's pretty much it. And, and that's her story, even though it's literally just pure exposition. They've had time to literally give a flashback to Kid Mulan, but not to Gung Lee, which actually would have made more sense. Yeah, just do literally just a paragraph of exposition. Let alone, she's more important, and she's, she, she's more well-developed and constructed than literally the essential main villain of the story. Who simply just 
a, a Roron conqueror whose father got killed by the Emperor of China. And he wants to wants revenge and he wants to conquer it. Hers though, literally with just a few sentences, she was already established more in this film than him. And that speaks high volume because Sean Yu essentially is set up to be the main villain. Although, yeah, she's he's outclassed Lily in every way by Gong Li. So there's that. I feel like the key concept of this, they mention it, they tell you about it, but <laughs> despite they bring up the concept of key, it's never really actually shown. And they never, it, the movie never really confirmed all of, you know, Gong Li's mystical powers is key or not. I mean, it's mentioned, it, it, it simply just says, key is uh, how, how, from what I interpreted it, key just simply means you're smarter or physically more athletic than most people. But they really don't tell you beyond what it really is, but instead of simple traits. I mean, from what I understand, key is essentially you know, spiritual force, a spiritual power, a metaphysical uh, construct of, you know, ability in, uh, to, to mostly fight. But this movie just more or less says, well, Key is, you know, you're just good at stuff. And despite they established the only male warriors can do what she has it. And so essentially she kind of does have her Mary Sue traits. But for the most part, uh, in defense of the whole Mary Sue thing, Actually, Move On actually had had the uh, had trials in this for a few scenes, admittedly. Everything else, yeah, she's a fucking wizard at it. But admittedly, no, this movie does make it seem like she has to strive to do it. And personally, yeah, I think uh, uh, Yifei, in terms of when she was, you know, impersonating a you know a male uh, character, I feel like it was kind of good in terms of performance and for the most part it was pretty convincing but yeah that's that's pretty much literally the gist of it i mean i'm a final verdict i'm gonna give this adequate i mean this personally i feel like this movie could have been like so way better if disney actually went into their pocket for it and you know especially how yeah spoiler again gung lee's character is killed by Sean Yu by a simple arrow, despite of all of her mystical powers, but yet a sing single arrow was able to kill her. Uh, I just feel like, yeah, you know, the, the narrative was kind of, you know, repurposed while during development. It wasn't just shoved down your throat because this movie literally feels like uh, someone took fucking 20 monsters, eight Red Bulls, and... And, and 50 rippets. That's kind of how the pacing of this of this movie feels like. And you can obviously tell this the script. The script was like kind of shoveled and was kind of you know pushed out as soon as they were working on it. And because of that, a lot of things kind of just don't make any blatant sense sometimes. And the and it kind of doesn't even have time to let the comedy breathe either for it. Like, yeah, granted, they want to make it more serious, but, you know, they want to make more, a little more tongue-in-cheek uh, concepts. Like, you know, there's a few slapstick moments. They're, if that's your thing, it's uh, rather hit or miss, if that's your thing. Uh, a slapstick, that's pretty much most of the comedy in this film. And it literally just only happens while she was training in the barracks. So, yeah, there's her comedy. And aside from Cricket's character himself and... Yeah, one of those engaging, you know, heartfelt moments in the film when they were sitting around a campfire and, you know, they were also all kind of nervous, especially Mulan. So, yeah, that kind of also reinforced that she's not entirely a Mary Sue. And at the end, she literally needed uh, the Emperor's help to kill Sean Yu when he dropped off a tower with the fall alone should have killed him. Yet, again, they had to use more bad CGI by using, by the Emperor throwing an arrow for her to kick it down so it can hit uh, Sean Yu and kill him. And they also, I guess from there, they also established that 
the emperor himself has some kind of tie with the uh, has some type of you know connection with the key. It, I'm saying the whole key concept. I'm like the movie could have been better without it. Honestly, I didn't really think much about it because it's literally just a plot contrivance. But yeah, I mean, I just feel like pretty much this overall. I just feel like this movie could have just had so much of a bigger budget and you know could have been a bit more gritty instead of all this shoddy fucking censorship they have you know when someone obviously gets <laughs> obviously gets hit with an arrow there's no blood on the wound like uh yeah disney must not know how arrows work because there's, there's blood like you know but they had to get that pg-13 rating but i'm like oh fuck that you, you you claim so much that you want to make this a groundbreaking film. You wanted to push it so hard and you know make it a a, a, a cut of the rest, but literally it, it, you was just poking at it. You weren't really you know putting your whole foot your whole, uh, fist in it. You were just poking at it, and th that's pretty much one of the main problems with this film that just keeps it so fucking lukewarm in general. It was afraid to take risk with it, despite literally how dire they make most of the themes and scenes in this movie and i just felt like you know disney should have really went in the pocket for this because this movie looks hella cheap it looks like they they, they bought the daughter shoes with the money from this movie they they should have really put their foot into this if they really want to make good movie and people just keep eating it up I'm, 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 me love me love low budget mediocre movies oh, 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 mediocre uh, cookie monster or some shit that's pretty much what this film is <laughs> they just really put their foot into this with budget and, and set designs and you know pretty much get some you know movie design and directors who actually know what the fuck they're doing instead of making this really wonky shot and 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 really obviously cheap set designs that was probably from the leftovers of the Aladdin film this movie could have actually you know been something it could have been so much better if they actually went full fucking force with it if they actually put a budget in it if they actually you know cared about writing a story and just instead of just throwing fucking fan service and pretty much uh, uh, writing the, uh, the script and uh, five hour energy drink juice but yeah that's pretty much about it and the whole time it just make them seem like complete limp jack offs because of it you kind of suffer from putting in mediocre and 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 and, and uh uh, cheaply made work and that that's the reason why it kind of got this really bumpy reception right now because they Feel like they weren't giving it all. They just said we want that China money, we want that yuan, and pretty much they shipped it off. So there it is. Like you're essentially making a movie based on literally a real figure in history, who's uh, you know romanticized in the story, who literally has a constellation named after her, Hoi Mulan. So I just feel like you know they just. I feel like Disney uh, right now they're just pretty static with most of their source material, and they're not really you know putting any effort or or spit or grit into actually wanting to make movies anymore, and that's kind of the problem. And personally, I kind of felt it a little. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I just felt it kind of. Uh, mm, shit. I just felt it. Uh, just. It's felt satisfying just looking at this movie for free because that's literally what Disney sees all the people see it just as dollar signs. And, you know, there's no point in dropping 30 for it because it doesn't deserve it because when a man works, he eats, and Disney did not do it. And at this point, that's just what they see most of the work out. And no, I'm not interested in that god-awful trailer for the recent movie that's coming out for Pixar. I don't. I don't want to see any more remakes of none of it. Disney ain't doing nothing right now. You guys are good at business. You're great, actually. You really just bought out Fox. Stick to that. But, you know, you can't be a business and be entertainment at the same time. Uh, or, or at least uh, from... Uh, that. This is simply just a theory 
that one can really just make from schlock like this. And quite frankly, well, I don't really look at fucking Disney remakes anyway because, you know, I'm not a fucking idiot. And, you know, I actually do care about looking at original or at least, you know, effort put uh, 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 work. And But that's besides the point. A film like this, yeah, I can, I do see me going back and looking at because yes, admittedly I did enjoy it despite sleeping at sleeping towards the Mongol. Uh, <clears throat> God, see, during the Ruron fight, that kind, I kind of did doze off. That's pretty much why I had to see it again, just to just to refresh my mind. But yeah, that's that's literally all you're worth. Like that's about it. Well, that's but that's pretty much all I got. That's all I got to feel. That's I'm not more or less. I'm not impressed to see the Little Mermaid one coming out. Yeah, she may be black, but that's that's cool and all. Like, yeah, more power to you. Like, cool. Like, you know, bless baby girl's heart, and you know she getting some work and representation. But I'm sorry, it's just it's hard to put your name on a movie like that, Little Mermaid. How influential that movie is. If literally you see things like Lion King, you see things like Lady in the Tramp or Dumbo or Aladdin, and you just say, well, what's even the point? Yeah, the money's in there, but when I get other work, people literally just go back to this. And people just say, oh, yeah, you you were in that schlock. I mean, it would just put you in the line in the back. Like... I don't know. Disney just actually need to give back on the A game. They they actually need to care about making good movies again instead of just making schlock. Yeah, I know it sounds like Trump, but that's besides the point. Uh, so yeah, y'all know the drill. Like and subscribe. You know, write in the comment section what what y'all think below and whatnot. How y'all feel about the movie? How it made y'all feel? You know, uh, check out my DeviantArt account. I'm starting to do more narrative and short horror stories like i'm trying to get into horror story writing and whatnot and there's a few you know you know critical analysis and essays on there you can that i might well, I eventually will get to and whatnot pretty much i'm back in business and you know i'm going to do the damn thing with any time at my hand of course but you know yeah that's about it peace